Hello family. It's been a while. Um, for those who haven't had a chance to meet me just quite yet, my name is Summer and this is my tiny house shadow. I know that y'all are waiting for me to do a tour video. I've seen your messages, I've heard your questions, and I promise you it's coming soon. I know many of you have been asking me other questions about my build as well. Are more videos coming? I do have more build series videos that I need to edit and post. I just haven't had a chance to get around to them yet. Um, maybe I will soon. We could talk about that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, I know you're waiting for a tour video. It's coming soon, but for now, today, I wanted to talk about something a little bit different. For a lot of you, or some of you out there, you know that I am a rock climber, and right now we're in the midst of coronavirus, which means that we are sheltering in place. It means our gyms are, are closed. It means that we are keeping distance from one another. We are in these in self-quarantine and self-isolation mode. And that also means that for many of us, we don't have access to our gyms um, for working out and keeping ourselves in shape and sane <laughs> as we work our way through this really hard, really tough, unprecedented unprecedented time um, for many of us. So yeah, this that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to talk about working out while tiny. You'll get to see bits and pieces of shadow along the way, um, but we're going to go through and just talk about some things that you can do as a climber, as a non-climber, as a person that's just looking to get some movement in your life while you're stuck inside, right? All right, let's go for it. much better. So there are a couple of things we need to think about when we're going into our workout routine. One of the places that I like to start to make sure that I am as efficient as possible with my time when I'm working out is with the journal. I like to sit down and plan what am I going to do? What workouts am I going to do in this session? So that way I don't have to spend a lot of time in between each of my exercises trying to decide, oh, what am I going to do next? I already know because I wrote it down and I planned it out. I'm going to take a moment, go into my journal, write down what my plan is for today, and then I'm going to share that plan with each of you. Typically, I'll go in and I'll divide my pages into seven different sections. It's a section for each day, and then I have an extra one left behind where I can take any notes that I need to jot down from what my workouts were like over the course of the week. Um, were they easy? Were they hard? Was I motivated? Did I really have to try to get myself out there to get the workouts done? All of that good stuff. As we can see from this week, I haven't been very productive. Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I haven't really done much working out at all. If you can see, those blanks are, are blank. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I, I did do a little bit of skating, um, but I just haven't done any really hardcore anything. Um, I just haven't been feeling very up to the challenge or motivated, um, and I need to break myself out of that cycle, which here I am today. So looking at our today, which is the 18th, this section. Now this may look a little bit coded, but it makes perfect sense to me because of the way that I organized my journal. Uh, what, we're what we're thinking about today, what we're looking at, we're going to do some core. So that's going to consist of sit-ups, uh, planks with some variations thrown in, as well as um, some weighted side dips and other exercises. Um, we're going to work on arms today as well, which is going to consist of um, working with doing some curls, uh, push-ups, as well as pull-ups with some variations thrown into that mixture. And then the last thing that we're going to work on today will be finger strength training. That's going to be important, especially to us climbers, because we have to keep these, these things strong in between our time uh, being able to get into a gym or being able to get outside to a crag. So we're going to do some finger strength training as well. 
before we do any of these things, we're going to do some warming up because it's really important that we get all of our joints moving and warm, anything that has a ball and socket. We need to get them moving around and ready to just do any kind of strenuous movement or strenuous activity that we're going to put them through. So we're going to start there with some warming up and then we'll make our way into these guys. Let's do it. So first things first, I'm going to make a little bit of extra room. Right now my sofa is folded down, so it's taking up extra space inside of the truck. I don't really want to go through the process of having to fold it up and fold it back down again. So I'm going to work out the best I can with this barrier in the way. But something I can do, I can fold away the stairs that get me up, gets, gets me up, get me up that allow me to climb up into my sleeping loft. So I'm gonna fold these guys away and then we'll get started on our warm up movements. movement we're just gonna do some simple arm waves as though we're gonna do jumping jacks but we're only gonna do the upper half first and then we'll add our lower half in in a moment so we're gonna do 40 of those and then once we do those 40 we're gonna flow right into adding our legs into the movement as well for 40 jumping jacks all right let's go So this movement allows you to get your shoulders warm. I can already feel a little bit of popping happening in this shoulder here. I don't have an injury currently, but I could be nicer to this shoulder than I have been lately. Damn. Five more to go and then we'll add in the jumping jacks. I think there's two more. And jump. Nice. So that movement allows us to get our heart beating and get some blood pumping. It also allows us to get a little bit winded as well. We're going to do more shoulder related we're going to do more shoulder related mobility movements. Um, we're going to do scissors. We'll do 20 of those. So, one, two, three. you should feel the burn. You should feel it here. You should feel it in your lungs a little bit. Getting that nice warm sensation going in your body. Getting that nice mobility happening. So the next thing we're going to do, because we're going to be doing push-ups, we want to give our wrists some love as well. So I'm going to start off by doing 20 wrist flicks. And then I'm going to do 20 wrist rotations. You want to do those in both directions. I was just going this way, so now I'm going this way. Now that we've worked our way through our hands, well, not fully through our hands, we still need to do some warm up finger movements, but we'll do those in a little bit once we get closer to actually doing some hangboarding. But we've warmed up our wrists a little bit. We've warmed up our arms, our shoulders. Uh, we've got a little bit of cardio going. Now we're going to move down into our hips. Now, when we're doing our sit-up motion, it's going to require us to bend at our hips. So we're going to do some hip circles like this. Think about it like a slow motion hula hoop. Right? So we're going to do 20 of these in one direction. And then we'll do 20 in the other direction as well. I think I'm on like 10. <laughs> now, we want to 
get a little bit of mobility happening in our hip in terms of a forward bend motion. So we're going to do dynamic toe touches and they look like this. So you're going to set your legs up like this. One leg bent, one leg straight. So then you can go down and touch those toes. And then switch. Now, once we get that moving, we want to get our knees moving a bit. So we're just going to bring our legs into our chest like this. And these movements that I'm doing to warm up pre our home workout right now are the same movements I do to warm up before I actually climb. And now, after those guys, we're going to warm our knees up. And the movement's pretty simple. Put your feet kind of close, about a thumb width, thumb width, thumb width, width, <laughs> apart from each other. And then you're going to move them like you're stirring a pot. I like it because it can kind of be a dance move if you want it to be. I'm only jumping around in circles so that you can see it from every angle. You could just stay <laughs> in one direction and do your knee circles. Alright, and the last thing we're going to do are, are ankle circles. So, a lot like we need to move our wrists, we also need to move our ankles. So, you're going to hold your leg out and draw circles with your foot. 15 in each direction. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, now the area in this house that we're going to work out is here. You can't fully see it from that angle. We're going to change the position of the camera in a minute. But there is a nice human-sized open area that's going to allow us enough room or allow me enough room to do all of the workouts that I have planned for us today. So the first set of exercises we're going to start out with are our core movements. We're going to start with sit-ups and work our way through various other movements in order to really activate that core and get a really good core burn. We're going to start off with just ordinary sit-ups. I like to do these in an interesting way. So instead of doing... Um, like three sets of the same exercise one after the other I like to do one set of one type of exercise then follow it up immediately with another set of another kind of exercise all set up and core related and then follow that up immediately with another type of core exercise and then I take a rest after that it's really intense it burns and hurts a lot um, but I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks and I'm really starting to see the impact of these movements in a positive way so let's get started the very first movement we're gonna do are just regular sit-ups not crunches but full floor to leg sit-ups so we go down we come up right so I'm gonna go through a set of I usually try to do depending on how I'm feeling that day I've actually been pushing out 40 in one uh, rep but I'm going to go ahead and just maybe shoot for 30 and then switch to our next movement and switch to our next movement, right? that we do are flutter kicks. So I like to sit, put my hands underneath my butt to elevate it slightly, lift up my upper body into like just a little bit of a partial sit up, legs are raised, and then flutter for 40. Yeah, 
The burn is real. All right, the next thing we're going to do are sit up and twist. I usually can do like maybe 15 of those on each side. Uh, we'll do 10, see how it feels, and work from there. So what that looks like, side but we're gonna do a few more <sighs> okay so that's the first of the core related workouts doing the sit-ups the next set of things we're gonna do are planks and I like to do them in a specific way I'm gonna grab my phone to function as a timer and for my planks I like to plank for a minute and then do either hip raises or toe taps on either side and we'll go through those variations um, at the end of each different plank movement so I'm gonna go ahead and set my timer for one minute and then I'm going to go into my first plank position. You want to make sure you breathe your way through the exercise. I forget to breathe often. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you're keeping good form. You don't want to sag your butt in like this. You want to make sure that you're nice and planked out, nice and stiff like a board. 20 seconds. Once my time hits, I like to do these. One, two, three, four. Ah, it makes for such a painful experience but in a really, really good way. So the next plank position that we do are two different side planks. And then we also um, add dips into those as well. So I'm gonna take my timer. It's already set for a minute. I'm gonna go in to my side plank. to throw in the dips at the end of my plank is because it's that extra 1%. So I went through, I held on as hard as I could through that minute of planking until it got really painful. And by the time I'm at the end of that plank cycle, it really, really hurts. So to hang on long enough to do 10 dips or 10 hip raises is adding in that extra little one percent of pain and it's going to help your body grow and get stronger and like adapt to the pain of the plank the pain of the movement i.e get stronger you know the whole no pain no gain what have you all right so we have one more set of planks to do on this side timer set for a minute I'm going to go into position. Oh, jeez. God, it hurts so much. All right. So we worked our way through our sit-ups and also through our plank movements. The next set of things that we're going to do are weighted side dips. I'm going to grab the camera and bring you inside for those. So this next core workout I like to do are, are side dips 
Are they called side dips? Actually, I don't know what they're called, but I hold a weight in this hand and I dip down in the direction of the weight. So I'm holding the weight on the side of my body that I'm going to bend into. So this exercise is going to work your obliques on this side as well as this side once you switch hands. I like to do this exercise with a much heavier weight than what I have available with me at home. This is a 20 pound weight. I usually do this exercise with anywhere between a 30 to a 45 pound weight, which means I'll do less reps of this exercise than I will do with the 20 pound. So I'll show you the movement. It's pretty simple. I've actually already done this exercise in this series of my working out today, but I'll show you what the movements look like and I won't do the full burn of the exercise right now. So you dip down and then you bring it back up. You're pulling yourself back up with your core. Activating your core to bring yourself and your body back to center. And then you do the same thing on this side of your body as well. Using your core to bring your body back to center. Alright, so the next set of movements we're going to bring ourselves into are push-ups. And I like to do a couple of different variations on my push-ups. There is the tra traditional push-up form, or I don't know if I I don't know if it's called the traditional pull-up form, push-up form. I don't know the names of these things. But just what I consider or think of as just like regular, degular ass, oops. What I think of as regular, degular push-ups, which are just like in this position, down and up. So I like to do those. And then I also like to do a couple of different variations on where my hands are located. So I use this blanket as my guide. For the regular push-up, my hands are right on the inside of the blanket. So it's about a little wider than a shoulder width apart. And then I like to do wide push-ups, which I place right on the outside of my blanket. And they look like this. And then I also like to do skinny push-ups where I put my hand, people call them diamond push-ups as well. Um, I'm sure there's a couple of other different names for them, but where I like to put my hands nice and close. So they line up right underneath my chest. And then the last variation of push-ups I like to do I put my hands nice and far out in front of me, like that, and then I come down, and those guys. So I'm going to work through and do my different sets of each of those different types of push-ups. I do one set of 10 uh, reps with each of those uh, different movements um, and then uh, depending on what the rest of my workouts are supposed to be for that day I may do like another whole round of those but one round of those 10 uh, reps with each set comes out to 40 push-ups all on its own so I'm gonna go ahead and just go through my movements of completing those push-ups to our arm movements are curls. I have 20 pound weights, one in each hand, and curls are pretty simple. You want to keep your arms 
parallel with your body as much as you can, using your core to stabilize yourself, using your arm muscles and your biceps, triceps, all of those good guys that are in your arms, using them and your core to bring the weight up and lower it back down. Bring it up, lower it down. Same thing with this arm. Bring it up, lower it back down. Bring it up, lower it back down. So I like to do, in the gym, I do this ridiculous thing that I call um, curl pyramids, where I start off with high reps on low weight, and then I work my way down and then back up again or work my way up and then back down again so i would start off with 10 pounds doing 20 and then i'll go to 15 and then do 15 reps then i'll go to 20 and then do 10 reps um 25 and do five reps 30 and two reps and then i make my way back down again that mind you may be the reason why i'm experiencing a little bit of climber's elbow or tennis elbow right now so we're going to keep it nice and light with the curls today because i don't want to aggravate this elbow that's been giving me a little bit of trouble sometimes i get carried away on my workouts especially when i'm really stoked about training for climbing and we're just going to do two or three sets of 10 with these guys. And I'm going to do them alternating. So one, one, two, two. All right, that's my first set of 10. And I'm going to do two more sets of those with about a minute break in between each of the sets. There we go. All right, so those are our arm workouts in terms of push-ups and curls. The last set of things that we are going to do are, are, is our fingerboard training. Above my door, I have a fingerboard, and we're going to go through, we'll start off with warming up a bit more with doing pull-ups. This will get our fingers activated. We're going to do pull-ups on the biggest jugs on the fingerboard. The board that I'm working with is a Metolis um, board, um, and it has um, a bunch of different finger pockets from four fingers to three to two. Uh, there's also a couple different size edges as well from being able to fit two full pads of your finger to being able to fit one pad. And of course you could always hang with as little pad as you want to on the board that you have available to you. Now as I mentioned earlier, if you don't have a board, you can use a door sill to hang from. Uh, there's various other surfaces that you can use. You just need something that will give you a crimp-like edge to hang from with your body weight or like less than your body weight if you're doing like assisted hangs, things of that nature. I think my dog needs to pee, so I'm going to pause the video, take him out to potty, and then come back and we'll start with our fingerboard routine. So this guy is our hangboard, and I have a couple of different holds on it, as I've already mentioned. There's jugs up top, and then there's varying different types of finger holes that have varying levels of depth in terms of how much finger you can get onto each of those holds. So we're going to start off by just doing our reps of pull-ups. I like to try to do three sets of 10 pull-ups if I can get them accomplished. If you can't do that many pull-ups, do as many as you can. So say you can do two pull-ups, then do three sets of two pull-ups. If you can do one, do three sets of one. If you can do 15, then do three of 15. You get where I'm going with this. So I'm going to start off by doing my reps of pull-ups, and then we're going to talk about 
warming up our fingers and getting them ready for hang boarding. Now, you want to make sure that your fingers are nice and warm before you start hangboard training because you don't want to risk an injury. I've been there, I've done that, and it sucked. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, so talking about warming up our fingers, totally easy, so there's no reason why you should miss out on doing these movements. First things first, I like to get all of my finger joints moving as well as get my forearms happy and ready and primed for some strenuous activity as well. So to do those, I start by doing these guys. It's a simple movement of rolling your fingers all the way through the movement, bottom to top opening up at the very top. This movement allowing you to get blood flowing in your fingers as well as waking your joints up, waking your tendons up and getting them primed for strenuous movement. I like to do before a hangboard session, especially if I couldn't climb before, I typically try to climb before I do a hangboard session. So then that way my fingers are nice and prime, ready to go for hangboarding. And I usually feel like the safest, like I'm making the this, this safest choice in terms of like my tendons being warm. Now I don't, I don't climb to my absolute hardest ability and then go jump on the hangboard like I'll do some moderate climbing and then jump on the hangboard so I'll usually do about two or three sets of 40 of these to get my tendons primed and moving another thing that I'll do to warm up my tendons are finger flicks so they look like this and I do these before climbing as well but this is another movement that's going to get your fingers moving and get your tendons primed and get your forearms full of blood so that you can hang to the best of your safest ability as well. Your fingers may feel a little stiff at first. Mine feel nice and stiff right now. They haven't had any climbing happening to them for at least four days. So they feel really stiff especially this guy. Another thing I like to do as well is just massage my fingers, work my way through my tendons, make them happy, get some blood happening inside of them. And then when I jump on the hangboard, I start with the biggest handholds available and work my way down to uh, really challenging my finger strength and my finger capability with the smallest hold. So I'm going to Go jump on the hangboard and show you what that looks like. Um, the routine we're going to work with is 7-5, which is 7 seconds on, 5 seconds off. And I do about 10 rounds of that, or 10 reps. So it's 7 on, 5 off, that's 1. So then it's 7 seven and I'll do ten of those and I change the different grips that I'm putting my fingers in the different holds I'm putting my fingers in with each of those so I'll start off with four fingers two pads three fingers two pads then I'll try to do two fingers two pads I haven't worked my way fully up to being able to do two finger strength maybe with all of this home hangboard training while I'm uh, while we are all stuck on a shelter in place and self quarantine and all of these other measures. Uh, maybe I'll work up to maybe being able to hang two fingers, but I'll go four fingers, then three fingers, then two, then three, 
then four and I'll alternate through those guys and I'll also like with the first round I do it with my biggest grip and then with the next round I'll do it with a smaller grip and then the last round I do it with the smallest grip that I have available. <music> some other things to keep myself in shape as well I have some one second these guys which I'm very stoked about. So I bought myself some new inline skates this week. Uh, in my younger years, I was very much into inline skating. Um, I was a, an aggressive skater and I decided to buy some new skates this week. So I picked these because they are somewhere in between freestyle skates and aggressive skates. They have a couple of features like aggressive skates have, but we're not gonna get into that too much. Outside of this is my other a uh, uh, workout tool while we are stuck in the vicinity of our own home. So I have been skating, practicing in the garage of my friend slash roommate's home. And I've also been uh, skating on our street, uh, skating at a local church that's nearby and there's no people there. Um, but since we're now on shelter, um, shelter at home, um, I'll probably stick to just skating on our street 
and um, in our garage for now. But yeah, so I'm getting cardio in with this. I'm also getting in really good leg workouts with uh, jumps and all kinds of other cool things um, that you can do with your skates. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's my fitness training. That's what I'm doing to keep myself in shape. And like, I haven't been hangboarding for a while. I actually stopped because I injured myself on a hangboard um, last year, summer of last year. Um, so I actually haven't been doing any, really any hangboard training since then, um, which explains a bit of my weakness, the weakness that I'm experiencing trying to do three finger hangs and my inability to do two finger hang. So I'm hoping since this is going to be one of my main strengthening uh, routines while we are in our shelter at home mode, um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get myself back into a really good rhythm in terms of my finger strength. That'll translate nicely once I make myself, once I make my way back to the gym and back outdoors to the climbing crag. So that's what I have for you today. Um, I'll be producing a few more videos. Um, I'll try to get the videos up of Shadow as well. I have um, videos about my plumbing process, a couple of other things, and I'll also have a tour video up for you all as well. You got to see a couple of glimpses of Shadow um, while I was doing my workout, and you'll get to see more of her. Yeah while we're in this shelter at home phase of things. Yeah, that's it. All right, so that's all I got for you for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. I don't care. I'm making these videos because I want to put information out in the world and I'm only going to make them if I enjoy them. And if you don't like them, I'm not everybody's cup of tea and I'm totally fine with that. Have a nice day.